A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandment, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandment and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command you, I no longer call you slaves, because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you, and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's second reading and in today's Gospel, John talks about love. Love. That probably the most overused word in the English language. I love you. I love my Nike sneakers. I love my new car. I love the face you make when you eat hot peppers. You know, you use, we use this word all the time, and it's sometimes very difficult to kind of gauge the true meaning of that word love because it seems like it's way up here and way down here and somewhere in between. But John in today's second reading tells us distinctly that love comes from God. So obviously love has to be something extremely important, something way at the top end of the scale. And he tells us that if we don't have love, then we don't know God. And God so loved us that he sent his only begotten son to us, Jesus. Jesus, who is love incarnate in the flesh, love, this symbol that we can look at and see how he lives his life and how God defines love. Now, we can see this because, you know, when Jesus came, he just didn't come for holy people. He came for everyone. God's love is for all of us. And Jesus spent a great deal of his time with those that were outcast, with the sinners, with the prostitutes, with the tax collectors, with those that were ill. And he gave them something they never had, love. And he gave them hope when they were hopeless. And he gave them an opportunity to understand what forgiveness and kindness were all about so that they could renew their life here on earth and to truly live that life as God gave them. Now, you know, the disciples asked Jesus, what's the most important of the commandments? Well, Jesus didn't pick one of the 10 because they're all important. But what he told them is the greatest commandment is love. It's love your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor, love everyone else, as as I have loved you. Seems pretty simple enough, but if you really think about it in its true text, if you love God with all of your mind, soul, and heart, you could not possibly love another God besides him. You couldn't love wealth, material goods, power, and all those false gods. Because God, being of your mind, soul, and heart, would be the focus of your life. And so you could not worship anyone other than God. And you couldn't use his name in vain, because how could you do that to someone you love? How could you use their name in vain and hurt them, to mock them, or to get them angry? And of course you would keep the Sabbath because 
you'd want to be with the person you love. So why wouldn't you want to be in his house? Why wouldn't you want to pray with him and worship him if you loved him so? And the same thing is with if you loved everybody like Jesus loved us, how could you lie to them? How could you cheat them? How could you hurt them or kill them? And how could you be adulterous about, with them? You couldn't because you love them. You wouldn't want to hurt them. You couldn't do that to your family and friends that you love. And so it would be very difficult if you to commit any of those sins of the Ten Commandments if you maintain love. And Jesus on earth showed us what love is all about. And we hear in today's gospel, he says, love is the greatest joy that you can imagine, right up there at the top of the scale in your heart. Just picture that incredible love and joy. It's something that you, when you know it, you can define it because it is from God. And giving one's life is because you're in so full of joy that you wouldn't even think twice about giving up your life because of that love. And Jesus showed us exactly how that happened. He accepted death, the worst death a human body could experience, being scourged, being beaten and humiliated, being nailed to a cross and crucified. And he accepted it out of love for all of us. And not just those who believed in him, all of us, even those who hated him, his enemies who put him on the cross. If you remember his last words on the, some of his last words on the cross were, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He didn't curse them and their families for generations to come. He offered them his love and forgiveness, even for what they had done to him. You know, when Jesus left, he commanded his apostles to go out and to spread the good news and the love of God to everyone. And if you read, you see that many, many people came into the faith. They came in droves. Why is that? Because, you see, they lived in a society back then very different. It was one filled with hate, greed, violence, fear, hopelessness. And what Jesus' disciples offered people was something so glorious, so joyous, so peaceful, is life living with God, the kingdom here on earth. And so they formed small group church communities because they needed to help to live this way outside of a world that was so unlike this. And so they gave each other what they had. They gave each other their love. They also put others before themselves. And they lived in this community where they were filled with joy and love, one that was persecuted and mocked by the larger society, and yet they didn't care. They were willing to give up their life because this joy that, of God was so great. You know, we lived in today's society and it's not much different. It's full of violence and greed for hate. And there's death. There's a lot of feeling of hopelessness and fear. Not much different from the times when Jesus walked this earth. And yet we have these small church communities like this one well, large community like this one. And you know, there's a feeling here because of this love of Christ that there is such joy and peace when we step through these doors and we live among these people that we call family because they bring that joy to us. They bring that love that protects us from what we face out there. We face ridicule, mockery, we, f we face people trying to take away our freedoms of our religion, all because I think they're envious because of what we have. And yet Jesus tells us, you know, I didn't pick you. Or, I'm sorry, you didn't pick me, I picked you. And in doing that, we said yes. You know, I mean, he opens himself to everyone, but we all said yes. And Jesus rewards us because he gives us the opportunity to bear great fruit. We have an opportunity to spread this love of Jesus Christ to our family and friends who are not in our faith communities so that they can too feel that there's hope in the world and there's peace and not to be afraid because 
With God, there is no fear. Jesus tells us at the last line of today's gospel, he doesn't tell us, he commands us, go and love one another. The strength of love is so great that it can move mountains and it can change societies. It did it once and it can do it again. It just takes us to go out and do what we're commanded to do and share the love, the peace, and the joy of Jesus Christ.